Hello and welcome to yet another Unity tutorial. Back back to Unity now. Uh, I thought it would be sensible and interesting to make a video on Shader Graph since that's one of Unity's new features in the 2018.1 uh, update. And because normally shaders shaders have always been a thing, but you'd have to code them, and I have no no idea when it comes to coding shaders. I don't even know what language it uses. It's got its own specific language for writing graphics. I haven't lear learned anything about that, not in computer science either. I know they cover that kind of thing in uni, and I'm not at uni yet, so I'm going to look forward to that. But for everyone that doesn't know how to code shaders, because that's the majority of people, um, Unity have added Shader Graph, which is used to have, well, most other, um, quite a lot of other software have their own versions of Shader Graph, but now Unity have their own, which is extremely handy, and it me means that people that aren't as experienced in coding shaders or that aren't artistically um, advanced you can you can just drag things around and check what works rather than having to change code save export and everything uh, you can just see it all um, rendered in real time and I will show you what I mean so the first thing you need to do is go onto window and go down to package manager this is where you download shader graph and what you need for it now I've done it in advance because I don't want you to sit here watching me download it so the way you would do it is, so here some of these are default. The two that I've installed is Shader Graph and Render Pipeline Light. So you want to install these two. Now to do that, if you don't know, you just click on all and they're all on here. They are grayed out because I've already got them. Um, you just click on it and there's an install button here and you press that and you install it. Same for this. And once you've got these two, the, you need the lightweight, re lightweight Render Pipeline. That's the one that supports Shader Graph. And in the future, they said they're going to make it so the high definition also supports Shader Graph. And then eventually they'll make anything, even custom ones, support Shader Graph. But for now, it's just lightweight because it's only only came out like a week or two ago, I think. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so once you've got those two installed, nothing will have changed really. But you'll have some extra options. So first of all, down here you want to create a rendering lightweight render pipeline asset, and then just don't you don't really have to call it anything. Just make sure you have it, and this is what lets you change the scene into a lightweight render uh, pipeline. Now, the reason why you need this object or yeah, is because it has settings. So let's say you had a game and you wanted different graphical settings to change these. You would just make multiple of these and swap them out when you want to use them. But for now, we'll just leave it as default and you click on file. No, sorry, you click on edit, go down to project settings. You go on to graphics and here is non for renderable, uh, friend, I can't speak today. Render pipeline asset. So drag in the lightweight one, and I, oh my gosh, uh, and not not much will change. You'll see this has changed, but your scene will look generally the same. Though if you're doing this onto a game you've already made and have textures for, everything could turn pink, and there's a lot of problems with that at the moment. Um, fixing lighting and issues because to use this lightweight uh, asset, you have to change um, to use the new post processing rather than the old one there's quite a few changes so i would recommend for the time being unless you know what you're doing only use this new shader and everything if you're starting a new game or starting a new project because it's so much easier rather than having to backtrack and change everything to be compatible but anyway so now we've got that set up and what we can do is we can create a sphere because that's our that's our object we're going to use and here is our sphere now for the sake of this i'm going to click on the camera game object align with view and then now in the game window you see this now here's our sphere it's pretty boring there's nothing on it um we're gonna make a custom shader for it so first of all it needs its own material so we'll call it sphere and we'll apply that now obviously nothing will have changed and by default uh you have a standard shader which is pink if you don't have it set to lightweight we're using lightweight so lightweight standard um and this is like a kind of this is a shader that Unity made, the standard shader, just to render it like this with an albedo and a metallic and everything like that. Now we're going to be making our own. So to make your own, you right click, create a uh, shader, and we're going to be using the the PBR graph rather than the other two. I haven't tried with the other two, and as far as I know, everyone just uses this for general purposes. So I would just stick to this for now, and we'll call it a sphere shader for the sake of this. And now once we've got our shader, before we do any coding, we just want to drag it onto here and it'll go pink, I think, or just nothing will happen. Here we go. But all the things are gone here because it has nothing to do. It just doesn't do anything. It's just gray default. Uh, but we want to make it do some cool stuff. So 
double click on shader graph and it opens it on my other monitor of course um, let's just put it in the middle of the screen um, I could dock it but then it'd be really small so I want it to be easily uh, easier to see so here is the only thing we've got well first of all at the bottom right is just the um, preview window this is what our sphere looks like you can drag it around it's a sphere so it's pretty hard to tell you can also right click and change to view it as these different uh, shapes or even as a custom mesh if you have one but anyway let's stick to sphere because we want to know what it looks like for our object so that's why if you're making a shader for a custom shaped object you want to use their mesh to test it just to see if it all works and then here is the kind of output window this is where everything goes into to make this so you have an albedo which is just the color which is the texture of this so if you set that to a color it would just be the flat color of it um, normal is to do with not color it's kind of to do with um, I'm not actually 100% sure about normals I don't really mess with that um, I will look into it actually as far as I know it's to do with height maps and everything but emission that's to do with obviously literally giving off light having a glow to it so if we change the emission kind of shines it kind of glows with it and emits and let me just put that back to what it was um, metallic yeah I'm not gonna go through these are all the same things that are already in here uh, but the best part about this is that you can import things into this to change it so I'm gonna click on two-sided actually so that means that if we ever if the shader reveals a part of the mesh so if it cuts out a bit you can see through to the back side of it rather than having it uh, just not like certain shapes you won't want this on and certain objects but for the majority I'd say you do well we'll see what it looks like you can obviously try both so and then up here is our kind of parameters board where we can take in values so I'll show you why that's useful in a second. It basically exposes the parameters to the shader so we can change them in the editor. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have a simple color emission. So we're gonna create a node and well, there's two ways to do this. We can either have a preset color, but we can't change it. So you could type color, which sadly I have to write it the American way. Uh, output that to emission, for example, and then anything we put on here will be the emission. Uh, the slight problem with this is that you can't change it in the editor so we want to do that click on a plus and there's different options here we want a color we'll call it um, sphere color I'm gonna spell it the English way um, and here it is and you can drag that to the emission and if we save that and then go back into here click on the sphere well the sphere material you'll see here now we have an exposed parameter sphere color which we can change in here. Now, if anything, that's just the same as changing the emission like normal. And we're gonna change that in a second and you'll see why. So let's just pull that back to there. All right, so now we've, we can change something from the uh, editor. Now, what else do we wanna do? We're gonna want, an, uh, want to add an effect. Now, one simple effect that most people used to show this off is the, oh, how do you call it? A fresnel, Fresnel, Fresnel. I think it's spelt Fresnel, um, said Fresnel, pronounced. Um, now clearly you can see what this does is it just makes a gradient of the color so rather than having the color go straight into the emission we want it to go through here first now there's three different parts here obviously the normal of it the view direction which by default are both world space which basically means it makes no difference where it is but you can obviously change those to make it so the object shader is different depending on your distance to the object and so on for now we'll leave that all we want is the um, Oh no, sorry, we don't want to put the color into here. It doesn't go like that. This is just responsible for the effect. This is responsible for the color. Now, if you want an effect to have a color, it's kind of the same as in maps. You multiply them together, so you get the product of them both. So there is actually something called multiply, and it takes two inputs and gives an output. Now, the output is going to go to a mission, so let's just get rid of this. The output is going to go to a mission, which does nothing because there's no inputs. We want one input to be the frontal and one input to be the color and now the final is the color so let's just uh, for the sake of this change it to red uh, as you can already see we now have like a cool ready glow on the sphere on the emission and then you can change the Fresnel value to change that now I also want to kind of turn down the smoothness of this why well, it doesn't really matter um, now I'll leave it 0.5 um, so yeah, you can change the uh, value of this. Now, 
it's obviously nice being able to do it in the uh, editor here but it's also a lot more handy if we could change it in unity itself so we're going to add a new parameter which is a vector one so it's just a single number value and we'll call it uh, Fresnel uh, intensity uh, yeah intensity and then um, we'll drag that in now where do we want to control the Fresnel intensity well here's the power for it so rather than having a little slider here we'll put this in and now whatever value we're putting here is going to be the intensity now in reality the higher the number the less intense it seems to be but you get what I mean you can change the intensity through here um, so let's just put one save now if we go into our game here's our object let's give it a purple and we can also change the intensity of it so now we've got like a cool purple glowing orb that looks really I don't I just really love that uh, how it looks um, it's very shiny so obviously I could add an exposed thing for the um, you can have an exposed thing for all of the sliders on here, like all of the values if you really wanted to. Um, I think the last thing I'm going to show is in this simple tutorial, obviously I'll add more tutorials, but the simple uh, final thing I want to show is, let's think, um, I could do, yeah let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to cut out parts in the mesh to have a kind of weird shape or like missing parts you might want to do this in if an object is getting hit and you want it to look like it's taking damage in a sense y you'll see what I mean so uh, one of the components we need is called step another we're gonna use for this or well, we could use noise um, no we'll use we'll use something more interesting we'll use twirl obviously twirl just looks quite odd it says colors and it's twirl I'm going to output this to here, and now as you can see, we have this, and we can change the strength of it, depending on how close you want these like swirls to be. Um, obviously you can offset things, you can do whatever you want. Now, let's just, sorry, reattach that. Um, the output of this is going to go to the bottom, the alpha clip threshold, which is basically where stuff can get... Uh, Cut out. So right now everything looks fine, and then let's turn the alpha down. As you can see now, there's actually like parts missing from it. It looks a bit odd, um, and that's dependent on this. So right now, one problem with it is that it's only covering two little bits of the uh, thing. And there we go. If we change that, now that looks really odd and cool. I mean, the best thing about shaders is there's no tutorial which can tell you how to make good shaders they can just show you how to make them and you can go and experiment yourself like I have not made this one before but in my opinion this object looks really cool even though it's not perfect and it looks a bit weird where it clips on the edge I guess but just that that is just a sphere but it has a different way of rendering it which is really cool um, obviously you can then instead of changing these little sliders in here you can uh, no, that's not really changing anything is it but this is like you could uh, obviously you could tweak with it in here which isn't the most ideal way to do it the most ideal ways to edit it in the actual thing but oh my yeah I really like how this looks now I, I don't like that part there'll, there'll be a way to fix that to make it look nicer um, but just this object in general looks really cool now and it's not like I've made some really complicated texture on it it's just a cool shader with a twirl thing to cut it it basically step kind of cuts out that um, shape like I could probably get a better definition but that's that's, that's what it does as such uh, I'm gonna turn off two-sided and see how it looks does that fix any problems so that looks really weird now because if you look through the object it doesn't you don't see the other side of the object it's kind of like it's 2d in the sense that the back of it doesn't exist it's just flat now obviously that problem still happens and you can see here it's a bit blurred through the object because it's kind of like the object's covering it. So I prefer leaving it on with uh, two-sided so you can actually see through the object and it looks really cool and mysterious. Uh, and obviously if you're not completely happy with it, you can just tweak things in here. So maybe you want it to go green or blue or whatever you want. Uh, it's really up to you. And 
I hope this video was a good introduction to using Shader Graph. I'll leave this on screen so you can see what I've done uh, to make this effect. Um, if you want more of this, please ask, because I'm glad to make more, t more tutorials on shaders, and I really want to learn more myself and know what all these commands do, because I know how to make some simple things, but there's so many commands on here that I don't have a clue what they all do. And there's not enough documentation yet on the uh, internet to actually see what every single thing does and what it looks like. There's also not many tutorials, that's why I think it's a good idea for me to make tutorials, because there just aren't enough of them at the moment for shaders, because it's so new. Um, over time there'll be more and more, and I hope I can uh, help with that. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. See you. Goodbye.